This here is the Panasonic PV-L353. This is a compact VHS or VHSC camcorder from I think around 2003. And when this camera was first released, I'm gonna guess it was probably around $500. Since these camcorders were kind of more of a budget friendly option at this time because VHSC and VHS was really starting to just be out the door. VHSC was not being produced after 2003, so that's why I think it's about that time era. Hi8, Digital 8, and Mini DV was really the new format that was becoming popular. And nowadays, if you look up one of these models on eBay, you can probably find one for about $25 to $30. You might have seen one at your local thrift store or maybe one that is very similar to this, and that's actually where I found this one. And in my opinion, I think these camcorders are a great starter camcorder if you're new to the retro camcorder world. There's a lot of VHSC camcorders from the late 90s and early 2000s that are all still working. I wouldn't say all still working, but there's a lot of them that are still very reliable and are still in great condition because a lot of people bought these and then used them for a very short period of time, I think, and then they just sat in someone's closet for a long time. And a lot of them actually have LCD screens on them and obviously viewfinders, but sometimes you can get lucky and you can get a LCD screen with one and a colored viewfinder. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have a colored viewfinder. This one is black and white, but it's still nice to have a viewfinder when the lighting conditions are a little too bright for the screen. You can always use the viewfinder. Now these camcorders do record in standard definition at a four by three aspect ratio. Don't be trying to change the aspect ratio to 16 by nine because you will stretch the image and it'll look a little weird and funky looking. It records 525 horizontal lines. It has a single CCD sensor in it. It has a 20 times optical zoom on it or in it. And in my opinion, I think that's a, a great zoom for an optical zoom. You can zoom in pretty far and there's a lot of modern camcorders that have 20 times optical zooms as well. A powerful zoom that will get you the shots that you need. But if you do need more of a zoom than 20 times optical zoom, it does have a 700 times digital zoom. If you use that entire zoom, you're probably not gonna have a very good image considering that you are recording onto VHS. The lens on it is a f1.7 lens and it does have auto iris and auto iris is kind of like auto exposure it's a little different but it kind of works the same way it has a four speed variable zoom on it it's a power zoom so you can get different speeds on your zoom so you can get nice and slow or you can zoom in and out nice and fast the viewfinder is a 8.4 millimeter or a 0.33 inch black and white viewfinder and it's an electronic viewfinder and one cool thing about it when you have the screen open and you have the screen on and you're looking at the screen the viewfinder actually stays on so you can actually easily swap back and forth if you need to while you're recording now that will drain the power a lot more but it is nice to have both working at the same time. That way you don't have to actually close the screen to make the viewfinder turn on. Along with the screen, it is a 2.5 inch LCD screen and you can actually adjust the shutter speed on this camcorder. You have a range between one in 100 and one in 10,000. And that's if you're in manual shutter. So it does pretty well in extreme light conditions. It can darken itself pretty well. You can also put it in manual and autofocus and the manual focus isn't very fine-tuned if you will because you have these two buttons here and they're up and down buttons. Push up to focus out and you push down to focus near and you can just kind of tap it and it kind of has almost different steps to where it focuses, so almost like different focal lengths, uh, de depth of field, <laughs> whatever it's called. Yeah, it's not extremely adjustable. You don't have a lot of play with it, so it doesn't have like a manual focus wheel or anything like that, so you have to use these buttons here, which kind of sucks. It's also got electronic image stabilization, so it's not optical image stabilization. These camcorders back in the day, they didn't have crazy 
stabilization, but you can definitely tell a difference when you have stabilization on and when you have it off, because it will be pretty shaky when it's off. And it, one thing that's kind of weird about it is if you're zoomed all the way out and you turn the image stabilization on, the image crops in a little bit, which is kind of odd. Usually when you have a image that's more zoomed in, it's more shaky than when it's more of a wide angle. So it's kind of weird that it crops in a little bit. It's not far, but like you can, you can see like a difference and it's kind of odd to me. And a cool feature that I found in the menu is it has motion detection recording. So you can turn that on and you can set your camera on a tripod or something like that. And you don't even have to do anything and you can have, I don't know, a bird or a cat squirrel, you know, whatever, walk in front of the, the camcorder and the camcorder will notice movement and it'll actually start recording. It's a little janky, <laughs> I think though, because at least with this camera, you can't stop recording for some reason. Like I was hitting the, the record button to stop the recording and it wasn't doing anything. So I actually had to turn the camera off for it to stop recording. And I don't know if that's how it's actually designed or if you just have to do that for some reason because it's just janky or if there's just something a little funky with this camera so I'm not quite sure on that but it is cool that it has that feature in it because I haven't seen like an old camcorder like this that has motion detection recording on it and I tried it and I just waved my hand in front of the lens and it started recording so I don't know how sensitive it is and this camera is one pound 9.3 ounces and I do believe that's probably without a battery and a tape inside of it so a pretty light camcorder so on the lens it doesn't actually have any kind of a filter thread on it which is kind of odd because I think that uh, it's a decent size for one. I would assume that it would probably be like a 30 millimeter or like a 30.5 millimeter. So if you want to use this for like skateboarding or anything like that, if you want to throw like a fisheye on there, you can't. And I kind of thought that maybe this little plastic piece maybe unthreaded and then there was some threads behind it, but I couldn't get it off. And they make it look like there's a manual focus ring on the front here when it's just a solid piece of plastic. So I I don't understand why camcorder companies do that when they make when they made these camcorders. They kind of trick you into thinking that there's a manual focus ring when you actually have to manually focus with these up and down buttons. You do get a little, I guess, nightlight on the front here. It's not very bright. It's like a halogen bulb in there. It's uh, pretty orange and it, it doesn't really illuminate all that great. So if you were to use it, you would have to be in more of a enclosed environment, like, uh, like a house or something like that. Maybe like a abandoned building if you want to film things like that but it doesn't have night shots so it's probably still not going to film extremely well with just the light but i mean it's there if you need it i guess and below the lens you do have your microphone it's this kind of mesh looking material here i do believe it's like aluminum and it is a stereo microphone so you do get left and right audio instead of just mono audio which would probably just be the right side i believe and one thing that just kind of makes me laugh about these camcorders and it doesn't matter if it's a, a vhsc a video 8 high 8 or digital 8 or even a mini dv camcorder but they always have to plaster their digital zoom everywhere on it they have to make sure that you know how much digital zoom it has and it's just it's so funny because it's like most of the digital zoom is not usable so i mean here it tells you that it has 700x digital zoom and then on the right side of the camera by the hand strap it tells you that it has 700 times digital zoom along with the 20 times high definition zoom lens so i i just don't know why they always have to plaster it around it's like look at me i i can zoom in extremely far but you're not going to see an image very well there's not any buttons here on the left side of the camera but where the screen is, you can come to the back here and there's a little button that keeps the screen latched closed and you can push it in and open it up and that's how you get to the inside of the screen. Even on the inside of the screen, there is no buttons in here, but you do get a pretty decent sized playback speaker. Coming along the back of the camera, your viewfinder, I say it pivots maybe about 80 degrees. It's almost 90, so I'd say maybe 75, 80 degrees, which I think is great because you can get really low if you need to use the viewfinder and you can still get down low and record if you need to that or you can just set it just like this and hold it straight up like 
that and record it. So whatever angle that you need with the viewfinder, you can use it. And then underneath the viewfinder, the little rubber garment, I guess, would be the uh, focus adjust here. So uh, depending on your eyesight, you can adjust the focus and set it to how you need it. You have your battery release button here, or I guess it's the switch on the bottom here. And you can pull it, push it to the right, and then your battery just pops off real easy. And sometimes these VHSC camcorders can be a little finicky to get the battery on. So if it doesn't ever want to go on, or if it's just a pain to get on, you can move the release switch and it will actually make the battery go into place and it'll lock in. But this one's not bad. On the right side here, you got your record button, very traditional spot for record buttons just so you can get your you know your thumb in there and start recording but you also have your power switch and you can switch it between camera mode and vcr mode so this is how you turn the camera on so switching it to camera mode it puts it in record mode and then you can start recording and all that kind of stuff play with all the the functions and everything if you put it in vcr mode or playback mode you can play back your footage and rewind the tape and all that kind of stuff and one weird thing is is that the power switch it doesn't have a little locking button mechanism because usually it'll either be white or it'll be green and you have to push it in and then you can move the switch around and this one doesn't have that so like this can actually just you put it in your bag or something and the the switch can just move all by itself and then your camera can just be on in your bag and you you wouldn't even know it and then you go to use your camera and boom battery's dead this one's a little easy to miss but you do have your AV out it's a 3.5 millimeter jack I always call it a 3 to 1 RCA or AV cable so one side will be the yellow white and red plugins everybody has seen that but then the other side will look like a headphone jack and it'll be a 3.5 millimeter that side will just plug into here and then you know the other side plugs into whatever other device that you have that you'll be playing your your video on coming along the top side here you got your playback functions but when you're in record mode they act as a few different things but for record mode you do get your stop rewind play slash pause and your fast forward button along with that your stop button is your backlight button in record mode you have your fade so you can turn the fade on and off i think you got to go into the menu and choose what uh, kind of fade that you want and then you have your eis or your electronic image stabilization so when you're in record mode you can just push the fast forward button and you can turn your eis on or off and it'll tell you on screen if it's on or not you have a little clear button here and that is your uh, button to turn the light on and you can cycle through a couple different menus so you can either have it off you can have it on or you can have it on auto mode so if you leave it on auto mode and the camera detects that it's too dark the light will automatically just pop on and then if it's you know light enough again the light will just turn off so kind of cool that a lot of camcorders back then especially the ones that had the built-in lights knew if it was too dark for it and it would automatically turn the little light on you have your tape eject here um, you just slide it to the right similar to like the battery release now you got your zoom slider here and I usually say zoom rocker but this is a zoom slider because it slides left and right um, zoom rockers they'll either rock left and right or, the, or they will rock forward and backwards I actually enjoy the zoom on this it's pretty responsive and you can get slow and nice smooth zooms with it and it has a decent range going left and right it's uh, it doesn't have you know very it doesn't have small movements it has far left and right movements so you can get different speeds of zooms if you need and then obviously you got the up and down arrows like I said and these are mostly to just get through the menu you can go up and down with it or if you have your focus on you can adjust the focus near or far and then the menu button obviously pushing the menu turns it on and then pushing the menu you can either go back in the menu or you can exit out of the menu depending on where you are and then the manual focus button turns the manual focus on or off, but it's also your select button if you're in the menu. So you can select things and, you know, get around in the menu. Along the bottom here, you got the, obviously the tripod mount. They usually set the tripod mounts where the, I guess the, the, the best balance point would be. And then you have a little compartment here back here. It is your nickel sized battery. I always call them that. I don't know if there's a specific name for those batteries. If you have that battery in there and it's a, you know, new battery, a working battery, battery it will actually keep the internal clock going so you can have your uh, date and time code stamp in the video if you want and there's a couple functions in the camera that it won't let you do anything with those functions until you have one of those batteries in there and working so I thought that was a little weird because that's the first time I've ever seen that that it won't let you do a, a couple little settings and programs in there until you have a working time code battery I guess so I think it's a little weird that it doesn't have any 
lens threads on the front so you can't put any kind of a filter, wide angle, telephoto lens, fisheye lens on the front. So that's kind of a bummer. But like I said, these are kind of more budget camcorders from back in the day. But it is nice that it has a screen with it instead of just a viewfinder. There's this little screen here on the side of the screen on the back side of the screen. And it just says uh, digital image stabilization, IES, palm quarter, VHSC. It's almost like it's behind like a clear piece of plastic. And I almost feel like they could have uh, used that space as another screen they could have put in for like uh, battery information and tape information and uh, you know just like an, an extra monitoring screen I mean maybe even like audio levels or something like that and I'm, I'm thinking that they have it like this because maybe there's another model it looks ex exactly like this but they just added that little feature that I talked about to that camera and maybe it's like the the better model of this and maybe it comes with like a colored viewfinder and stuff like that so a lot of camcorder companies did that back in the day they would make a very similar body or they would make the same body but then there would be like base models and then they'd have different models and they would just add more functions and better features to them as you went along so like the base model looks the exact same as the high-end model but the high-end model just has better components and stuff to it so like they would have uh an lcd screen and then like they'd have a colored viewfinder and then you know maybe they'd add a little monitoring screen on the back side of the lcd screen for you know battery and tape information and audio monitoring and all that kind of stuff so if that makes any kind of sense now the screen itself you know vhsc camcorders and even like Hi8 camcorders and stuff. Camcorders from the 90s and 2000s, the LCD screens weren't very good. They didn't have great quality to them. Like they were just kind of dotty looking. I don't know, they're, they're kind of weird. You can obviously see how big the screen is. And I've always scratched my head on that. The screen's huge. Like the entire body of the screen is big. But then the LCD screen itself is only a 2.5 inch LCD screen. And I've always thought that was really weird because you, you have so much room to make the screen bigger. And I don't know if they were even able to make the screen bigger without making, you know, the body of the screen much larger. You can almost, you can see this outline around the screen and it almost looks like they, they made it like that so they could put in like a 3.5 inch screen on a better model, I guess. And I've never seen a 3.5 inch screen on one of these VHSC camcorders. So I don't even know if they even do that. So it's just that they have the opportunity for it. They have the space for it, I think. And I don't know why they didn't put bigger screens on these. Cause I think it would give you a better image. I don't know. If somebody knows more maybe about that than I do, maybe leave a comment and let other people know. Now, I don't really care for the black and white viewfinder. There's probably a model that is maybe a model higher than this one that probably had a colored viewfinder. There's a lot of camcorders that will have LCD screens, but they have black and white viewfinders, and it's kind of weird to me. I like VHSC camcorders, especially the ones from like the mid to early 90s and early 2000s, just because you can find them all the, at least for me, I can always find them at thrift stores, and anytime I take them home and test them out, they seem to always work. Like I think there's been maybe one or two that I've ever checked out that just had some kind of a problem. The Panasonic ones and the JVC ones are always the ones that are generally pretty reliable. I just don't think they get used very much or they I don't think they were very used very much. They were kind of more in mint condition than a lot of other like mini DV camcorders and stuff. So yeah, if you're looking for your first retro camcorder, definitely check out like a late 90s, early 2000s model to get yourself your first VHSC retro camcorder. This camcorder will be for sale. It is for sale as of recording this video. This camera is fully functional. It will come with a brand new caster battery that will be compatible with this. It's a little bit smaller of a battery than the one that I have on here. And it will come with a brand new caster battery charger. And this is a dual charger. So if you have, if you end up buying more than one battery or if you have another battery laying around, you can charge two of them. It will come with a used tape as well. And you can check the description down below my eBay store if you want to snag this camera for yourself and start recording retro videos. If you have one of these or a very similar one, I will leave links to batteries, chargers, tapes, video converters, and really any other kind of accessory that will make these more fun and enjoyable to use. These will be Amazon affiliate links, so if you shop through those links and buy anything from those links, 
you will be supporting the channel. And buying my camcorders on my eBay store will also support my channel. Enough me rambling, why don't we check out some test footage out at the skate park with this little guy, huh? So let me know what you think of this little Panasonic VHSC camcorder. Would you buy one? Have you ever owned one? Or do you own one very similar to it? And do you enjoy filming with it? Or did you enjoy filming with it? And if you like this video, make sure you leave a like on it. And if you enjoy my content, make sure you subscribe because we talk about old school retro camcorders almost on a weekly basis. And on that note, we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.